Hello everyone, my name is Utzi and I'm a senior colorist at ARI. And today I want to show you how easy it is to set up images of the Alexa 35 for grading. I'll be using Resolve and Baselight for this. And in the second part, we'll be looking at our new look workflow, which we have for onset look management and what that means for creating these look files and how we can use them in post-production. For this today, I have downloaded some sample footage of the Alexa 35 from Ari's website. I placed them here on my desktop in my medias folder. You will see I have some images of the Alexa 35 from the Ari Encounters films. This is a short film series which we shot with the Alexa 35 all around the world. I'm using a Mac Studio M1 Ultra option today for all of this. So this is just for your reference so you understand what performance you can expect from your machine once you get these images. I have software-wise also the UI reference tool which Ari is offering for all Alexa images. So not only for the Alexa 35. And what's new about the Ari reference tool is that we're combining all the tools we had before, which is the color tool and the meter extract into one tool now. And this is the Ari reference tool. But let's ju jump straight in. I'll open up Resolve. I'm using a beta version, which um, has the capabilities of Alexa 35 incorporated. All of this will be in an upcoming release very soon, um, released to the public. Let's just call, open up a new project and call it Alexa 35 grading. And I'll go to my media pool and I will just find these images. So if I look at all the footage I've just imported and uh, click on some images, you can see they show up nice and easy. The Resolve already understands Alexa 35 images. I can play them back. They play back with 24 frames in Resolve. Actually, I don't have a um, performance uh, figure for Resolve yet, but I've used Art to test and I can play back 65 images or open gate from the Alexa 35 using this machine. So you will get a smooth 24 frame playback. Now, the first thing I will do, I will add another column here. I, I will press on input color space. And once I have this column, you will see that Alexa 35 already has the ARRI Log C4 input color space tagged straight away. So the system already knows Alexa 35 images and it will handle them accordingly and correctly in the system. I have one clip from the Mini LF. So this is now called ARRI Log C3. So this used to be ARRI Log C only in Resolve, but it has changed to ARRI Log C3, which is really the right number to separate it from Alexa 35. We're going to look at differences of ARRI Log C3 and ARRI Log C4 first. I'm going to take this image, which is our ARRI reference image, which we shot on the Alexa 35 and as a reference also on the Mini LF side by side. So I'll take this image and I'll take the uh, Alexa 35 image and just put them into a timeline and just call it compare logs. And if I open it up in the color page, this is the mini LF image uh, in log C3 and this is the Alexa 35. The first thing you definitely will notice, uh, Ari log C4 is darker. Why is that? Well, the Alexa 35 camera has 17 stops of dynamic range, and this is more than two and a half stops more than we used to have with all the existing cameras like the Mini LF. And to fit this extra dynamic range into the highlights and, and the blacks, we needed to drop that log C encoding. To show you that in a graph, I have here a PowerPoint. It basically shows both encoding curves 
log C3 and log C4. And I've marked middle gray, 18% gray here. And as you can see, it used to be 39% on log C3 and is now 28% on log C4. Once the correct color management is applied to both of these images, they will have the same brightness again. And also, when you select the, a false color in the camera, the same regions will show up correctly um, on both images. So let's talk about lookup tables. Because log C4 has a new encoding, um, you also need different lookup tables for the Alexa 35. So this is very important. All the existing lookup tables you've been using for Mini and Mini LF and the Amira cannot be used for the Alexa 35. We have put all the lookup tables into a package, which you can actually download from our website. I will show you this here. So I'll jump to Safari. And when I scroll down a little bit further, there's the Alexa 35 sample footage part where you can find these encounters shots I'm using. And you will find the Ari Alexa 35 3D LUTs package. This is one zip file. It will include all the lookup tables you need for grading um, Alexa 35 images using the reveal color signs for SDR and HDR. So you get options for Rec 709, SDR, Rec 2020, SDR, for P3, for cinema release, SDR, but also for HLG and HDR10 or PQ for HDR grading. I've placed them on my desktop folder as well. So let's go back here. I'll show you in the LUT section, I have the Alexa 35 LUT package. I basically used only the 65 point mesh size 3D LUTs here, but you can see the options you can have in that LUT package. I also have the look library, which is redesigned for the Alexa 35. So all the looks you are used to from the Mini and the Mini LF, all 87 looks from the look library exist for the Alexa 35 now. They've been adapted for the new Log C format. And so, but they will do visually the same what they used to do on the older cameras. And we'll look at how to redesign a, a lookup file as well later on in this tech talk. So if you have something for log C3 or, and the Mini or the Mini LF, how to adapt that for the Alexa 35. Of course, I have um, one lookup table for the Mini LF here as well, which is the Rec 709 LUT, which is the latest Aries offering. DaVinci Resolve offers a Rec 709 LUT in the installer for years, but this is still the old K1 S1 lookup table, which is uh, deprecated, and we actually have a newer version of this, which is the Alexa SXT Log C to Video Rec 709 LUT. If you don't have this, you can generate this using our LUT generator online. So let's go back to Resolve and start grading. For this, I'm going to go to my Encounters films. I'm just going to select all the footage and put these into a timeline. I'll call it Alexa 35 grading. And I'll just put this into the master and open it up. The images are log C4, and we want to grade a Rec 709 master. I want to do this using the latest reveal color signs Irie is offering. So I have my lookup tables for outputting for to a Rec 709 monitor. Now I'll show you how to set up Resolve, which is fairly easy. So I'll open up my project settings. I'll go to my color management page. And at the bottom, I have this lookup tables section. Now, using a color management system, it is best to use it at the end of the processing chain. And the easiest way to do this in Resolve is using either the video monitor lookup table or the output lookup table. The difference between the two is the output lookup table will be processed into your rendering. The video monitor lookup table will not, 
It will be previewed on your XM09 monitor and on your GUI monitor, but it will not be processed into your graded images. So why would you do that? Well, the industry standard at the moment is to use color management and grade log to log. It doesn't matter if you do this using ACES or the custom color management systems built into Resolve or Baselight, or if you use ARIES color management, most often you want to keep your grading in a future-proof format. And that's really the log DSM, the, the log, logarithmic digital source master. And to show you what the difference is, so you come in with your log images, you grade them in that color space, you preview using your output device transform on your reference monitor, but you don't render that into your output. So you get a log DSM, which is graded log images. They're output referred, so they, they um, are graded for a certain output device. And you have to kind of note what that device was and what lookup table you, you were using. But to do it this way, you have logarithmic images which are graded, which are future proof. So it doesn't matter what output device transform will come along in the next few years. You always have your images prepared for grading. The only thing you'll need is a new output device transform for that new TV or new cinema system. And then you're good to go with your graded images. I'll do a Rec. 709 master. I want to render out Rec. 709 images as my master. So I'll use the output lookup table section here and I'll go to my Alexa 35 LUT package and select the Rec. 709 lookup table. This lookup table assumes you're using a Rec. 709 monitor with gamma 2.4 and a white point of D65. The second thing is I have to tell Resolve what images I'm grading. So what format are my images in once they get to the timeline and also what I'm outputting. Resolve cannot get that metadata from that lookup table I've just selected, so I have to tell the system what I'm doing. So in the, my timeline color space, I will tell it it's ARRI log C4 images, of course. And because we're grading in ARRI log C4, and this is important for things like the color space transform node. Um, so Resolve really knows what we're starting with and when, when we're converting to other color spaces. And here on the output color space, I'm selecting Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 to match to my um, mastering display. And this will make sure that the preview image on my GUI monitor is looking correctly as well. So I hit save and you can see the image changed. We're not seeing a log C4 image anymore. We're seeing a Rec. 709 image and I can start grading. So I can go here and I can um, look at this shot, which is actually a very nice image to show you the new dynamic range of the camera. Let's use this clip just to demonstrate grading. So I'll, I'll just use offset and show you what 17 stops of dynamic range really mean when you're grading for an SDR master. Now, looking at this image out of the camera with the right color management applied, it looks like there's not much detail in the outside, in the window. And in, as well as when you look at the hair of the mother who's telling her daughter what to wear in this shop which only sells red clothes, it also looks like there's not much detail there. So I'll, I'll just start by using my offset control and I want to really show you if I print down this shot a lot, you will see that there is no clipping in the outside world in the signal on that log C4 image. And if we go the other direction, I could show you that all the detail in the hair is still there in the raw image. Most often, as a colorist, you're faced to kind of show both. We want to see detail in the black spot and we want to show highlights which don't look clipped. So I'll just show you quickly what I normally do for a shot like this. 
I would probably use the highlight control of DaVinci Resolve, which I'll do with the mouse right now here, just for you to see where it is. Um, I'll drag that down to minus 100, which is the maximum you can have in a node. And you can see that a lot of detail is coming back in the, in the background without the, the skin of the girl dropping down. So, so the luminance of the girl is kind of um, staying at the same place, but we're getting a lot of more detail in these highlights. And the second thing I often do is I kind of flatten out the highlights and I do this using the custom curves. So I'll go to my custom curves. I'll start by adding the default anchors. I'll actually delete these two here on the top. I'll use the top end, I'll bring that down. And then I'll have to find a nice spot for this where actually I still have enough brightness in the girl's face. And well, maybe this is too already too low, but here this looks kind of nice. You get more flat highlights so you can see a lot more detail in the highlights and without going into clipping. And this way I generated quickly a highlight control, I'd say, for this image. So let's go back. So this is where we started off. It looks very clipped. It looks like there's not much information out there. And uh, this is what I just did in a few seconds. We looked at Ari's reveal color signs. Let's look at other options in Resolve. For this, I will actually just grab this frame and call it Reveal Rex 9 Because what is very important is once you change color management, your rendering will also change. This means the rendering from your logarithmic file to a display is always different in the, in the different color management systems. And you have to be aware of that as a colorist. So because the DOP most often previews the image on set in a certain way, and it is good for you to replicate that in post-production so you have the same starting point. If you want to change the um, color management, your starting point changes as well. So let's jump in. I'll set up for ACES first. For that, I will get rid of that lookup table, which I don't need for ACES. That's all incorporated. ACES doesn't need lookup tables for output devices. It uh, has that all uh, incorporated in the workflow. Here at top in the color science section, I'll select ACES CCT. I'll use the latest version, ACES 1.3 as an input device transform, I'll actually tell the system I'll be using ARRI Log C4 images. This is not necessary for ARRI RAW images because they know what they format they are in and Resolve already applies the correct input device transform for those images. But for other images like ProRes files, which might not have a color space tag, this is good to um, set so they will be using the IDT for log C4 automatically as well. On the output device transform, I will we'll look for Rex 9 That's all I need to set up and I'm good to go and I hit save and bang, I'm ready to grade in ACES CCT straight away. Now, as you saw, when I hit save, the image changed. It actually became more contrasty. There's also a little bit of color shift. Um, the skin tones are a little bit more yellow in ACES compared to what we have in the reveal color signs. So I'll just, to show you the difference, I'll just click on this still and bring it up and then move it across. So, so this is the reveal color signs Rec. 709 render compared to ACES. Now, this is only the, your starting point. You, of course, can generate whatever image you want with any color management you like to use. The next option in DaVinci Resolve is 
uh, of course, the DaVinci Resolve color management, which um, Blackmagic offers for a, a couple of um, releases now. So let's look at how we have to set up Resolve for that. It's actually fairly simple as well. So here at the top, we go to DaVinci Color Managed. I'll actually leave the automatic color management and SDR on as well. That's all I need to do. And I hit save. The image changes once again to a different rendering. So let's compare that quickly. So Ari reveal color science rendering compared to DaVinci Resolve color rendering. There's no right or wrong. I just uh, would like to point out that to get all the benefits of Reveal Color Science for the Alexa 35 images, it is best to use the lookup tables of Reveal as well. So there are benefits of using that. We've um, put a lot of effort in rendering colors correctly, and this helps you to get better skin tones and get better colors in skin tones and better color tracking in skin tones as well. Meaning that if you have a face coming um, from a bright uh, surrounding and going into shadow, it will stay the same color. So if you want to have all these benefits as a colorist, it is best to use the reveal color signs. But of course, the other options are open for you to use as well. So. That was um, Resolve. Let's look at Baselight quickly. Baselight is a little bit different in that uh, Filmlight kind of enforces color management to be used. So for that, we kind of put all these lookup tables, which I have in the LUT package, into an ODT family. This is the output device transform family. And the output device Transform family is not included in the install of Baselight at the moment, but you can get a download link from ARRI or Filmlight, which you then can install for your system to have that ODT family. So let's open up Baselight. I'm using Baselight Assist on the Mac here, and I'll create a new scene, call it Alexa 35 grading. Uh, will work in UHD 24 frames. And here in the working color space, I'll set this to ARRI Log C4. So you can see Baselight already knows Log C4 as well, like Resolve did. And it has the option for older cameras Log C3 as well. Both systems are ready to go. I'll so select ARRI Log C4 here. I'll set OK and I'll import some images. So I'll go to my desktop. And I go to my media, Alexa 35, Encounters. And I will um, get these uh, sample footage and just put them into my timeline. I will change my container, of course. Baselight at this point recognizes there is lookup tables or look files included in the metadata of the header. I don't want to use them at this point, so I'll um, say do not apply. So they will not be read from the header at this stage. Now we have the shots in my timeline. I can, of course, play them back. And you will see that they play back at 24 frames easily. Now, we wanted to set up for reveal color signs. The first part is that that baselight already recognizes the ARRI raw being ARRI log C4. So here in the input, it says automatic. The second part is really the rendering again. So I'll have to set that up. So I just jump to my scene settings. And in the format and color page, I will go here, down here, and it says display rendering transform. And it's using the native TrueLight Cam V2 option at the moment from Filmlight. We'll look at that in a second. But uh, I want to use the ARRI ALF4 um, LUT family, ODT family 
for this at the moment. So I'll set this up. For here, I can leave on automatic, and as well in the advanced section, I'll leave automatic from DRT as well. So this is all I need to do to set up. My viewing color space, I have to set to Rex M09. And um, there we are. And now I'm good to go to grade the RE log C4 images. Just to be sure that what we're doing, I can call up the, R, uh, the color space journey. This really shows what happens to the images. But as you can see uh, in the input color space, base light detects it's RE log C4, RE white gamut 4. And we're using that to grade that format. And we're using the RE ALF4 ODT family to convert to Rec 709. Okay, so that's RE reveal color signs. Of course, Baselight also offers ACES and their native um, T log grading format as color management. So let's look at ACES first. For this, I will open up the scene settings again and I'll go to my format color page for my Working color space, I of course don't want to use um, RE log C4 at this stage. I will want to go to ACES CCT, which is the most used format for grading for ACES. And then for my display rendering transform, I'll set it to ACES um, rendering transform 1.1 plus, which is the latest as well. Now that's it. I close the window and I'm all set to go for ACES. I can call up my color space journey and it changed a little bit because here in the beginning we are now converting to ACES CCT for grading, but it is kind of the same principle and this is, as you can see, simple as well. The third option, the T-log e gamut uh, inside Baselight is simple as well. So let's do this now. I'll call up my scene settings again and for Using T log E gamut, I'll select that as working color space. So I'll go here, film light T log E gamut, and for the rendering, I'll be using True Light Cam V2. You can see as I change the display rendering transform, the images changes again, like it did in Resolve. This is just the same because the rendering change the image changes as well. So, but this is only your starting point. Underneath, you will still have the full RE log C4 image capabilities in all three color management systems. So let's call up the color space journey again, just to verify. So we're inputting RE log C4 images. We're converting them to T log E gamut, which we are using for grading. And then they're transformed through the True Light Cam V2 rendering to Rec 709. Okay, that's um, baselight done. So we talked about grading um, log C4 images. Now I want to show you the all new look workflow we have for onset. Why did we change that? Now in the mini LF and the mini, you can load 3D LUTs into the camera and use them on set. They always will be made for one output device. So, so you have a look file for Rec. 709 and you might have another one for HDR. And you might have a third one for another HDR option. And this gets really complicated in camera. And the second thing, we, what we noticed, once these look files come to post, they cannot be used for other deliverables. Let's say you were monitoring Rec. 709 on set and you had a look file for Rec. 709 on set. Once it gets to post and you have to finish for cinema P3, it is very difficult to use that look file and get it into P3, opening it up to use all the benefits of P3 without just converting Rec. 709 to P3 in, in the output. So, in, in most cases, the colorist would call up the DIT and say, well, you created this look file in Rec. 709. Do you have that for P3 or Rec. 2020 SDR? And then the DIT goes, no, I don't know. I got this from somewhere and I don't have it. 
I cannot provide it. And then you're kind of stuck because you use the look file on set, which you then cannot use in post. So we thought it's really now time to change this in camera. So we came up with a complete new look format. And this format is the ALF4 file, and it is a log-to-log -log workflow. So this is the old ALF2 workflow, which you use on the Mini or the Mini LF. And basically, what you had to do is, if you want to create a look file, you would do most commonly a log-to-log -log grading using a Rec. 709 output device transform LUT. And you would bake both things into one 3D LUT cube file, which you then can convert to an ALF2 file for the camera to read uh, using our RE color tool. Here you have the creative grading and the color management, so the output device transform LUT all baked into one, and you cannot have them separate on, uh, on set anymore. Now for the Alexa 35, we have this new workflow where you generate your creative grading using our Reveal Color Science output device transform LUTs. And then you only take that log-to-log -log grading, you bake it into a cube file, which you then can convert to an ALF4 file for the camera using the our reference tool. Now, I've talked about a little bit about the benefits on set, but I also want to show you quickly what are the benefits of log-to-log -log 3D LUTs in post-production. And for that, I want to use the, the look library, which I have as a log-to-log -log 3D LUTs here as well. So if you look here, this folder contains the Alexa 35 look library as log-to-log -log, uh, 3D cube files, which I'll be using in Resolve. So let's call up Resolve. I'll go back to my Alexa 35 grading. And I'll actually go back to our real color signs because this is really the way I want to grade uh, for this because these 3D LUTs are log C4 to log C4 3D LUTs. So here I'll set Rec. 709 gamma 2.4 and as my output I'll set the Rec. 709 LUT. Okay, so we're back and we can start grading. Now I'll go to the LUTs section up here and go to my look library. Now I have all these cube files. First thing I can do, I can just take one and just click it and it will be applied. And I don't have to worry about the output device transform because they're log to log anyway. So I can click through them and just try them. So the first thing I can do once I find something I like, so let's say I'm using the 2110 commercial right now, and I, th I say I like that look a lot, but it might be too strong, so the first thing I can do, I can fade it off. I'm going to use the key output gain here on, in Resolve, which really means I'm only going to use a certain percentage of that 3D lookup table. So now I'm going back, and let's say oh, this is about 50%, and this is what I like. Now, so this is one real big benefit. You can fade them on and off. But you can also apply multiple just behind each other. So I can put another fashion here, and I can, let's say, uh, I want 20% of that. That's that. And what I can also do is I can fade between different um, looks. So let's say we take the film, and I'll just create a layer. And in my second one, I'll use the um, fashion. And then once I use the key output here, I'm actually fading between the two looks. And I can find a, a sweet spot where I say, oh, this looks really interesting. And all of this is only possible because these look files are, exist in log to log. So, that's the benefits. Now let's look at how to create a log-to-log -log look file for the camera. I'll actually use this project. We can use this 
But since I'm, I only want to create a log to log lookup table, I actually have to change my output lookup table to the video monitor lookup table. As you remember, I stated earlier, if you want the output device transform LUT not to be included in your rendering, you have to use this video monitor lookup table section. So I'll kind of, I'll take it out here and I'll go down here and select it again. Once I had saved, the image doesn't change. The only thing changing is what I'm rendering or what I'm creating as a 3D LUT because it's only as a preview now that this Rex 9 LUT is used. For Let's say I want to create a look for this close-up. Let's start just by primary. I'll go jump into my offset and I'll just make a little bit cooler. And uh, let's say I want a little bit more contrasty look, so I'll just drop here, two points, and I'll just put a little offset here. And let's say I want to swing my reds a little bit because her lips are getting a little bit pink here. So I'll just take the hue, the red hue, and just move that a little bit towards the yellows. And I'll actually uh, put a point here at zero just so that skin colors don't change. So a fairly simple look um, I've created. I'll just save it here. Um, if I So this is my standard Rex M19 image. This is the look I've created. Now what I have to do to get it into the camera, I'll go down here to the icon of that shot and I right click it. And I go to the generate LUT option and use the 65 point cube. This is 65 mesh size cubes for this. The camera actually can read 65 point mesh size cubes now as well. So this is very good because they're much more precise than the 33 point mesh size cubes. I'll go here into my user LUTs and I'll call this Alexa 35 uh, look and I'll call it cool for instance and I'll save it. And at this point, I'm done with Resolve. So I'll close it down. I have to do one little bit of cleanup. If I go to my user LUTs, you will see that uh, Resolve always adds the file name of the shot I was using into that cube file. So I don't want that. So I'll just clean up that name to that. And the next step I'm going to take is I'm going to convert this 3D cube file to an ALF4 file using the Avi reference tool. So I'll start up the Avi reference tool. I will actually find the same media, the same shot I was using just to verify that what I'm seeing in the Avi reference tool matches to what I've created. So I'll um, go here to Alexa 35, to the encounters, this was part of the Japanese Encounters film. Um, yes, it's this shot. So I'll open it up. And um, I'm now in the R reference tool, which now has this new look section, which used to be the RE color tool, but is now integrated into one tool. So I'll go here. And the first thing, I, when I press on that section, you will see that the RE look library is actually included uh, in all 87 looks in the in the IRA reference tool. And you have this for log C4 and for log C3 as well. So if you're looking for a look file for the mini LF, you can actually open it up here in the IRA reference tool and export a 3D LUT or an uh, ALF file for the camera, for older cameras as well. But here we have the all new Log C4 Alexa 35 look library present. And it, the, the system will only show you the correct look files which you can use on your footage which you have in the viewer. So that's why I'm only seeing the Log C4 look library at the moment. 
Now, down here, I have my CDL values and I have my 3D LUT. So here I can load my 3D LUT and I'll look for my Alexa 35 look cool, which I've created and open it up. And once I click on that, you will see that it has changed. So I've loaded my 3D cube file and all I need to do to export it as an ALF4 file for the camera is go up here to this button, press export look file, and I will call this look cool. And I'll save it in my tech talk folder on the desktop as well. And it will show up here in, in my looks on the right hand side and I can double click it to make sure it's doing the right thing. I can also deactivate it using the look button up here. All you need to do now is take that ALF4 file, put it on a USB stick and load it in the Alexa 35 camera. This is the workflow if you want to create a new um, look file. Most commonly, a lot of you guys have already look files for the Mini or the Mini LF out there, which you're using daily on set and in post-production. And now I want to show you how to recreate these um, look files for the Alexa 35. Now, most of you will think, well, the best way would be we just um, take that look file and we put a color space transform in the beginning and then we put a color space transform at the end and we kind of convert log C4 to log C3 and then go to rec 709 and then we go for rec 709 back to log C4 and then we have this log C4 look file. This is possible, but it will limit your look file to the old 14 stops of, uh, or 14 and a half stops of the Alexa Mini LF. And it will also limit the color space to the difference between Ari White Gamma 3 and Ari White Gamma 4. So this is actually not a very good thing to do because your look file, which you will make for the Alexa 35 that way, will not show the capabilities of that new camera. And so I want to show you a very simple workflow how to recreate a look file. And for that, I've dug in the archives and just um, took one look file from the look library, from the old look library, from the one for the mini. And I will recreate that now for the Alexa 35 for you. I'll open up Resolve. So I'll be using Resolve again for this. The original look file was actually created in Resolve. So that's why it makes sense to use it again. I'll just call this Alexa 35 look file recreate. I have prepared here as well uh, a side-by-side -side sh shoot from the Alexa Mini LF and the Alexa 35, which I'm going to use for this look file. So this is the Mini LF shot. And let's find the Alexa 35 image and drop that into the media bin. Now, the Mini LF, the first thing I'm, I'm just, I just need to, to change my image scaling. So I actually see kind of the same thing. And then I'll make a timeline out of the mini LF, which I'm going to call mini LF, and I'll call it 2120 fashion, because that's the look file I'll be using. So I'll open up this on the color page, and I will look for that old look file on disk. I will import it as a still. I have it here. This is the old one for the mini. I'll double click it. And if I look at the node graph, it is fairly simple. That's why I chose it, because it's going to be fairly quick. But this all applies for complicated grades as well. So this consists of two primary grades. We can see there's some lift gamma gain done and some custom curve. And then we have lift gamma gain again on the, prime, on the second primary. 
Now I'm going to apply this to the mini LF shot. Uh, I'm going to apply this grade. And of course, here at the end, I have a lookup table because that was included in the look file back then. So now if I reveal the sec selected LUT, I can see it's actually using the Alexa SXT log C2 video rec 709 LUT, which is correct. Visually, this is what the look um, should be doing on the Alexa 35 as well. So I'll be saving this and I'll call it mini LF2120. And since this is done in two parts, I will actually deactivate the second node and save that as well. And this will help me to regenerate that or recreate that look file for the Alexa 35. So I'll call this mini LF primary one only. Okay, so we're done with the mini LF. We have all we need. Let's go back to the media and find the shot shot on the Alexa 35. I'll create a new timeline. I'll call it Alexa 35 recreate and open it up. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to apply the whole look file. I'm just going to apply it, which doesn't make sense because we have this LUT, which is for the mini LF. We know that is for another camera. We don't need that. So I'm going to throw that away immediately. But I want to keep these two nodes. So now I'm going to set up for my look workflow for the Alexa 35. So I go into color management. And as you know already, we set the video monitor lookup table to Rec 709 using the Alexa 35 LUTs. And I'm just going to set my timeline color space to R log C4. And I'm going to set this to Rec 709 gamma 2.4. OK. This is just by copying the settings. Of course, the look is not doing perceptually what I wanted to do. So now I, I will have to start adjusting the settings. I have to do each of the nodes individually. So I'll do the same thing I've done on the mini LF. I'll turn this off and then go back to this still I've saved and call this up and compare the two. Now, once I do that, I'll notice that the mini LF actually will be double, double LUTed. And this is because I've set the video output LUT to the Alexa 35 LUT. And now there's an option which says apply display LUT. Once this is active, Resolve actually puts another LUT on the still I've saved. I don't want this for this workflow, so I'll deactivate this. And you will see that your image actually looks correctly. Now, of course, visually, um, we're not there yet. It, it is doing kind of the same thing. But since Ari Log C4 is different and the color space, the Ari White Gamut 4 is different to what we had in the Mini LF, of course, the settings I've done with this grade have to be different as well. So I'll go to the primary one node and I'll um, check what's been done again. I can see, yes, in my primaries, there's been some changes, there's a little bit of gain, a little bit of offset. And here in the curves, I have some custom curves. Now, we know that the log C4 is darker. So also the way that these points work, if we just copy them across, uh, is different. So we know that for log C4, we have to move them a little bit further down. So this is what I'm going to do right now. Uh, first, I'm going to move this one a little bit further down in the curve. And I'm going to do the same for this one here. Um, I can always compare to my mini LF, primary one only still. And I'll toggle between the two and look what what it's doing at the moment. I'm fairly close. Still, the skin tone is more yellow on the mini LF. So I'll just jump into my offset and 
adjust that until I'm happy and it's maybe a touch brighter. Okay. Okay, let's say this is good visual match. Now let's turn on primary two. The image changes. Now the reference has to be the complete look we have from the Mini LF. So I'll click on that. And once I compare them, I can see that my printer lights are too strong. So I will change them accordingly. I'll just warm them up, put a little bit of magenta in them. Uh, and, and that's fairly close. So this is just to demonstrate. I mean, you can spend definitely more time on this and to make it much more accurate. But this is just to show how to recreate a look file you had for log C3 for the Alexa 35. That's what I can show today. Um, I'll be doing another tech talk in the next couple of months because there's still some things we haven't looked at today, which I cannot show because it's not ready in the partner software. One thing is, of course, how to get the look file out of the header, how to use the 3D LUT, which we put into the camera in post-production, in base light and resolve correctly. And the second one is how to mix old camera footage from the Mini LF with the Alexa 35 in one timeline. Because we are offering to debayer Alexa Mini LF footage if it's shot in Arri Raw, to debayer that to the new reveal color signs and the log C4 format. So this will give you the ability to have um, Alexa Mini LF footage, for instance, and Alexa 35 images side by side in the same timeline, in the same format in the future. That's it from my side today. I hope you enjoyed this tech talk. If you have questions, please use the comment section below this video or contact us at digitalworkflow at re.de. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.